The plague did not go away following the end of the Black Death of 1348. Instead, over the next 300 years, there were multiple outbreaks killing tens of thousands of people and decimating the populations of towns such as London and York, which respectively lost 20% and one third of all the people living there in the early 1600s. The Great Plague in 1665 was, however, the last major plague epidemic to hit England. In many ways, thinking about the causes of the plague showed continuity between the medieval period and yet another serious outbreak of the disease in London in 1665, which became known as the Great Plague. Beliefs about the causes of the disease continued to be largely the same with people blaming miasma, an imbalance of the four humours, an unusual alignment of the planets, and many claimed that it had been sent as a punishment from God. One change that represented a new idea, however, was the idea of contagion. This was the belief that people with the disease were contagious, therefore suggesting that the disease could be passed from coming into contact with an infected person or their bodily fluids, such as the pus from buboes. Most treatment was carried out by a plague doctor. The doctor wore a mask containing herbs to cover their face when treating patients and wore a waxed coat so that any pus did not come into contact with their skin. However, some of the treatments tried by the plague doctors were not trusted and therefore the people began to call them quacks. In terms of treatment, there were aspects of both change and continuity between the Black Death and the Great Plague. People continued to pray for victims or gave them religious charms to cut out. Just like in the medieval period, sometimes buboes would be cut open to release pus in the hope that this would allow the victims to recover. Similarly, to try and rebalance the four humours, doctors might bleed patients. Methods to deal with miasma also persisted, with people using sweet smelling herbs such as lavender or sage carried or hung in windows and doorways, as they believed that nice smells would purify the body of unclean air. However, there were some changes in the treatment of the plague. Firstly, people began to use new forms of herbs and plants from around the world, which had not been available during the Black Death. For example, tobacco was either chewed or smoked to overpower miasma, but this was expensive and thus only the rich could afford it. Another new type of treatment was the use of plague water. This was a mixture of wine and sweet herbs that supposedly gave protection from the disease. As in the Middle Ages, the king and the authorities issued various orders to try and stop the Great Plague. They ordered public days of fasting and that people publicly confess to their sins and pray for forgiveness. Measures were also taken to improve public cleanliness to prevent miasmas developing. The mayor ordered that households had to sweep the street outside their home and wash the area twice a day to prevent buildup of dirt. Pigs, cats, dogs and other animals were banned from being kept in the city. However, some of the actions of the mayor of London showed a change in understanding from medieval outbreaks of plague. As people began to believe in the idea of contagion, the government did more to try and prevent the plague spreading from person to person. For example, examiners were appointed in every parish to identify those who had caught the plague and families were expected to report any relevant symptoms within two hours. The victims of plague and their families were then not allowed to leave their house and watchmen stood guard outside to stop anyone from going in or out. This was called quarantine. A red cross was painted on the door of a plague sufferer alongside the phrase, Lord have mercy on us, warning people to stay away from the area. Many people voluntarily tried to stay at home as much as possible to avoid catching the plague. When they did have to go out, money used to buy food would be washed in vinegar first to avoid passing on the disease. 
popular forms of entertainment, such as plays and bear baiting, were banned to prevent large crowds from meeting and spreading the disease. A final measure to try and stop the plague spreading through contagion was the policy of killing stray animals in the city, leading to the deaths of 40,000 dogs and 200,000 cats in 1665. Despite all these efforts, the orders of the Mayor of London were often ineffective as Parliament refused to turn them into laws. People ignored the orders and did not report symptoms and there were even over 20 cases of watchmen being murdered by people escaping from the houses in which they had been locked up. Nine officials were appointed to oversee the orders in London, but six of them left the city as quickly as they could and the king and his council also abandoned the city. The disease ended for a combination of reasons. Firstly, it could be argued that it had run its natural course. Cold weather also killed the bacteria. Finally, the Great Fire of London in 1666 also contributed to the end of the Great Plague. The Great Fire destroyed large areas of the city and as a result, the narrow streets and wooden buildings that in part caused the disease to spread so quickly were replaced by stone and brick buildings with wider paved streets. These improvements did lead to London becoming healthier, but they were short lived as the city became overcrowded again, the benefits of rebuilding disappeared. <laughs>